This video covers our section on linear equations from our chapter on growth and mathematical modeling. This section is basically a review of some basic algebra skills such as solving equations and graphing lines and we'll also look at a couple basic modeling problems. Our first objective is learner solves linear equations. Uh, we should also talk about what linear growth is. Uh, linear growth refers to a quantity that changes at a constant rate for each unit of time. So imagine you have a job where you work and you earn let's say $15 an hour. That would be your rate of change, your rate, uh, which would be the $15. And it's constant because you earn the same $15 every hour you work. So that's an example of linear growth. Uh, as for a linear equation, um, and a linear equation in two variables is an equation that can be written in this form, the ax plus by equals c. But really, you should just think of the linear equation having regular x and a regular y. So that means your variables can't have extra exponents, no x squareds or anything like that. Uh, they can't be underscore roots or in the denominator. If you have a regular x, regular y, you know it's a linear equation. We'll mostly be working with equations in y equals mx plus b, which is our slope intercept form, and we'll talk about that in a different section. Lastly, uh, when we solve linear equations, keep in, uh, in mind your, your basic algebraic properties, such as we can manipulate equations by adding or subtracting quantities from both sides of an equation, or we can multiply or divide non-zero quantities on both sides of an equation. These are the basic tools we use to manipulate equations and isolate variables. So let's try some of this out with our first example here. Um, it says, suppose you run a small carpentry business and you currently have 15 cabinets in your inventory and you can produce five new cabinets per week. Notice uh, that is a linear growth scenario because it says you produce five per week. So it's the same constant rate each week. We can model that scenario with this equation, y equals five x plus 15. In this model, Y is standing for the number of cabinets you have available for installation in X weeks. So again, Y is the number of cabinets, X is the number of weeks. If the local high school needs 45 cabinets for the new art building, how many weeks would it take to fill that order? This question and pretty much all the modeling questions you get, you should try to reformulate them in terms of X and Y. So they're giving us uh, the fact that we need 45 cabinets and they're asking us how many weeks. Remember, y is cabinets and x is weeks. So we're solving for x and we're giving a y of 45. So we could retranslate this question as, oops, one second. There we go. As what is x when y equals 45? All right, so always try to take these problems and translate them into uh, more straightforward problems in terms of x and y. And this does the first job of just kind of translating um, the scenario, the context of the problem back into the algebra. So we'll take our equation and we will plug in 45 for y. So instead of y equals, we'll have 45 equals and the rest of the equation 5x plus 15. And we wanna solve this for x. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of this 15 by subtracting it from both sides. So 45 minus 15, we get 30 equals 5x and then we get x by itself by dividing both sides by 5. We end up with x equals 6 or uh, 6 weeks. So 6 weeks after we get this order we will have produced enough cabinets plus the ones we started with the 15 in order to have 45 cabinets so we can fulfill the order. Next example, we have solved this equation, 3a minus 7b equals 42, 4a. So this is just an example of taking an equation with multiple variables and um, manipulating the equation, reordering it so that you get one of the variables by itself. Oops. Um, okay, so here's the equation. We're going to solve it for a. So we want to get a by itself. The first thing we should do is get rid of this 7b by adding it to the other side. So we get 3a equals, now we can write 42 plus 7b. We could also write 7b plus 42. Um, I like this form just because when we think y equals mx plus b, we usually like our mx term, our term with the variable to be right here. Um, but in this case, it doesn't actually matter. And lastly, to get a by itself, we need to divide by 3. Make sure you divide, I recommend everything by 3 separately. Uh, now this one dividing separately doesn't really matter. We still end up with some fraction, which is 7 thirds B. I am going to split off the fraction from the B. And again, that's for the future, uh, the slope intercept form. Um, 42 over 3, 
uh, I believe is 14. Right, so that one does simplify. So it's worth splitting these two up at least so you can write this as a nice clean number. And it's not a pretty answer, but our goal is to get A by itself. And if you notice, A is by itself. So that is our result. So again, we'll, we'll do this a lot more when we have equations and we want to uh, manipulate them and force them to be in our y equals mx plus b or slope intercept form, which again, we'll look at in the coming sections. Our next objective is learner uses intercepts to graph linear equations. So the intercepts, the x and y intercepts of a graph are the places where your graph crosses the x and y axis. If you take a look at this graph here, um, it crosses the x-axis down here at negative two zero. So we could say its x-intercept is negative two over the point negative two zero. And it crosses the y-axis at the point zero three. So the y-intercept is three over that point zero three. Um, now it's easy if you have a graph, obviously, to, to identify your x and y-intercepts. But if you have just an equation and you want your x and y-intercepts, you can also do it, but you gotta be a little tricky. Um, keep in mind that, let's say you're after the x-axis. Anywhere you're at on the x-axis, your y coordinate must be zero, right? Because you haven't went up or down at all if you're on the x-axis. So you can solve for the x-intercept by setting y equal to zero in your equation and then solving for x. Similarly, if you're after the y-intercept, imagine if you're on the y-axis, that means your x-coordinate is zero. You haven't went left or right at all. And so if you want to solve for the y-intercept, you can plug in zero for x in your equation and then solve for y. Let's try that out here in an example. We just want to find the x and y intercepts and we are given this equation. The equation is 6x minus 5y equals negative 30. Let's go ahead and start with our x intercept. So remember, if you're on the x-axis, that means you haven't went up or down at all, which means y is zero. So we're going to take our equation and plug in zero for y. Now it's pretty nice to plug in zero because that means this piece is just going to go away. Anything times zero is zero. So we get 6x equals negative 30, and we solve this for x by dividing both sides by 6 to get negative 5. So we can say the x-intercept is negative 5, or more precisely, we just found a point because we got negative 5 for x, and remember we plugged in 0 for y to start with. So that is our, our x-intercept. Now, similarly, let's do the same thing for our y-intercept. Remember, if you're on the y-axis, that means you haven't went... Uh, left or right at all, so you can plug in 0 for x. So we'll take our equation, I believe it was 6x, so 6 times 0, minus 5y equals negative 30. There's the equation there. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, okay, and we're going to solve for y. So again, this piece becomes 0, nice and easy. We get negative 5y equals negative 30. We solve for y um, by dividing by negative 5 on both sides we get y equals positive 6. Remember, negative over negative is a positive. What point did we just find? Well, we plugged in 0 for x. We got 6 for y. So that is our y-intercept. And we can use these to graph. Um, here's the completed graph, but just imagine you have these two points. This is our x-intercept, negative 5, 0. Our y-intercept, 0, 6. And as long as you have two points, uh, that's all you really need to graph a line. So you plot those two points, you sketch the line through it. So not only is this a way to find your x and y intercepts, which some, sometimes might be the objective of the problem you're working on, um, they're also, this is also a method of graphing. Find the x and y intercepts and then plot them, use them to graph a line. And lastly, we'll do a similar problem, but with some context here in a modeling scenario. So suppose you need to train your swimming pool and you use a pump that can remove 500 gallons per hour. You can model this scenario with this equation y equals negative 500x plus 2,000, where y is standing for the number of gallons left in the pool after x hours of pumping. So again, let's focus in on here. Um, y is the number of gallons, x is hours. Y is gallons, x is hours. Find the x and y intercepts of this equation, interpret their meaning, and use them to sketch a graph of the linear model. So let's do the same thing we just did. We want our x-intercept. Remember, if you're on the x-axis, that means y is zero. So in our equation, we're going to replace y with 0, and we're going to solve for x. Okay, so here's our equation with um, 0 plugged in for y. We want to get x by itself. We could subtract the 2,000 to the other side and divide by 500. We could also save a step by instead moving the 500 to the other side, since there's nothing else over here. So let's try that. Let's add the 500x to both sides. 
keep in mind there's several different ways to use algebra to solve equations. Okay, so we just moved the 500 to the left and now it's positive. And so if you want to solve for x now, divide both sides by 500. And we get x equals 4. So we just found the point 4, 0. Also wants us to interpret the meaning. So let's think about this in terms of x and y. What was x and what was y? So y was the number of gallons left in the pool. X was the uh, number of hours we spent pumping. So x is hours, so it means after four hours of pumping, there are zero gallons left in the pool. Or we could also say something like it takes four hours to drain the pool of all its water, something to that effect. Okay, so we found our x and y intercepts, and sorry, we found our x intercepts and we interpreted it. Let's go ahead and find our y intercepts and interpret it. Same idea, right? We want our y intercepts. That means we're going to plug in zero for x this time. Remember, if you're on the y axis, that means your x coordinate is zero. So we have y equals, it was negative 500 um, x. So now we're going to replace this x with zero plus 2000. And this one's very easy because this becomes zero. Y is already by itself. So we get y equals 2000. What point did we just find? Zero, 2000, right? Zero for x, y was 2000. And what is our interpretation of this? Well, again, x was number of hours spent pumping. So after zero hours of pumping, there's 200,000, sorry, 2000 gallons in the pool. That's the same thing as saying um, the pool initially, we'll go. 2,000 gallons. Okay. This pool started with 2,000 gallons or the maximum capacity of the pool was 2,000 gallons, something like that. Okay, and we've interpreted our x and y. We found the x and y intercepts, interpreted their meaning. Now we're going to use it to sketch a graph. So our y intercepts, x is zero, y was 2,000 way up here. Our x intercepts, x was four, y was zero down here. Notice it um, stops here because this is kind of the, the context of our, our scenario here. It started with 2,000 gallons and it was draining 500 each hour. So in the first hour, it was down to 1,500. These are going by uh, half, right? So this is one here and then two. So anyways, um, after the first hour, it drained down to 1,500, second hour down to 1,000, third hour 500, and the fourth hour it was completely drained. So the graph doesn't extend beyond this because all the pools drained at that point. Okay, so here's an example of uh, using x and y intercepts in a scenario with some context, uh, finding them, using them to sketch, and of course, interpreting them. So that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.